Hail a cab on the streets of Wuhan and you might be in for a surprise. The city's host to China's first fleet of driverless taxis. For the moment, it's just a trial project in a limited area, but it's captured the public imagination. If it becomes popular in urban areas later on, I'll consider taking a driverless car as I live in a busy area. But for now, I'll go with a manually driven car. It's just a new way of traveling, and one more option is a good thing. And from a safety point of view, there are no examples of it being dangerous. And that means driverless cars are reliable. That's not entirely correct. In July this year, a man was hit by a driverless taxi that ran a red light. But public perception overall remains good. The cars are hailed with an app. The company is an offshoot of Chinese tech giant Baidu. After punching in a code, the doors unlock and you're on your way. A touch screen gives passengers control of climate and volume levels and shows obstacles on the road detected by 38 sensors embedded in the vehicle's frame. The ride is a little bit juddery. The motion sensors are so sensitive they'll stop for anything that could be a possible obstruction. But to be frank, in 30 years of riding taxis in China, this is one of the safest drivers I've had. But the autonomous taxis have become a hot talking point in China, not for their safety record, but because of their price. Fares begin at 50 cents, only a fifth of the cost of an ordinary cab. As China embraces automation, people are worried about the human cost. I'm definitely worried. I'm worried about losing my job and income. I have to work, I have to live, I have to survive. Already new prototypes have been seen on the streets, and the fleet of driverless taxis is to be doubled by the end of the year to a thousand. Little stands in the way of progress here, even if it's seen by some as a dangerous path. Tony Cheng, Al Jazeera, Wuhan. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.